Good afternoon, everybody. Colin here with Tech Out, and today we've got some exciting gear here from Alto Labs. Um, they are a network company coming out with some new access points, switches, and hopefully some other devices um, next year as well. Um, so they were kind enough to send me over four of their Alto Labs Wi-Fi 6 Pro switches. Um, so these are the AP6 Pro uh, dual band enterprise access points. Um, they will also be sending me over their 10 gigabit PoE switch, um, but those are not um, available until later this month. Um, so I am currently redoing my network that I was uh, using all you uh, Ubiquiti gear. Um, I'm replacing all the Ubiquiti access points with these Wi-Fi 6 access points, and I'm going to be replacing my uh, Ubiquiti switch, which is not PoE, with the Ultra Labs 10 gigabit PoE switch. I do have two gigabit internet here at my house, um, and I do use um, SFP from my UDM Pro, which is uh, technically 10 gig, so that'll connect right into the new 10 gig switch, and every port basically that I'm using on that switch will be able to run at full gigabit um, on, my, on my network, um, and then of course have that two gigabit bandwidth on the internet. So, very cool. We're gonna get to unboxing this here. Um, I have set one of these up. I just set my main one up um, upstairs. This one's gonna be going in my office right here. Um, so I did set one up and then I'm gonna unbox this one and we're gonna go through the setup of the second one on, um, on this video so you guys can see how easy this really is. Um, a lot of people seem to be against the web management on the uh, forms that I've been reading, stuff like that, but I plugged the thing in and it showed up and I didn't have to like really create an account. You can sign with Google. Um, so very, very easy setup. I literally plugged the thing in and it showed up. So um, we'll go over all the setup and stuff here after I show you what's in the box, but very nice solid access point. Um, these are IP54 rated. Um, so like dust and very, very slight water resistance. Um, however, they do say on the back that they are uh, for indoor use only. So I would definitely have this in a covered environment, not you know totally outside on like an exterior wall in the weather. Um, but maybe suitable for, you know, like outside but covered, like on a porch or something like that, um, where it's not gonna get, you know, directly wet, um, but it may be a little bit dusty or something out there, or in like an office environment, you know, like a warehouse kind of thing. Um, but as you can see here, it appears where the mount goes, it's not sealed or anything like that. Um, so definitely not fully waterproof for like outside. Very cool design, um, almost looks like a heat sink right here. I don't know if that's what the intention of this is. It's not, I don't think it's metal, but um, very cool design right there on the back. Uh, we've got your PoE port right down there. Very nice. Um, they are like, you can set them on a table, you can wall mount them, you can ceiling mount them, a bunch of different stuff. Right here we have your Alta Lab Quick Start Guide. You can scan that QR code to look at a version of it on your phone as well. And then right here we have the back plate for wall mounting. Um, so you can put your uh, screws in there and wall mount it. Just clips onto the back. And then right here, they do very nicely lay out your screws and all that kind of stuff for wall mounting. I believe there's even, um, yep, right here, there's even some feet if you are gonna be placing it on a table. Got wall anchors, everything you need to mount it, which is very nice, I like the packaging. Um, if this reminds anybody of Ubiquiti's packaging, that's because the Alta Labs team, some of them did come from Ubiquiti, so a lot of the same style in here in the packaging, which is nice. Because um, I do like Ubiquiti products, but um, these are a little bit better in my opinion. I do like um, the direction the company is going with um, with their stuff, and I like I just speed tested my phone on my the one I set up already, and compared to my U6 or sorry my uh, AC mesh from Ubiquity, um, I was getting about three to four hundred megabits down um, in my room, which is across from where that AP is, and. I'm getting about six to 700 now. Um, and that may get a little better. I have a PoE switch that I bought on Amazon um, for testing these APs before the other one got here um, from Ultra Labs and it's kind of janky. Um, the SFP ports aren't working and um, I've got all my devices on it. So it's limited to gigabit right now um, across all those devices. So that's kind of bottlenecking uh, the full capability of the network. Uh, has nothing to do with Alta Labs. Like I said, it's just a cheap switch I bought on Amazon while I'm waiting on the Alta Labs switch. Uh, but this just goes on like so, um, lines up like that. And then there are two little push tabs on the sides so you can pull it up. And then they're very strong. Uh, there goes one. And then 
kind of do it off camera, give it a little extra strength there, but uh, right there. And then right here and on the other side is where you would use like an eject um, tool. There's no special tool for it, um, but you just push in right here and it comes off. So I'm gonna plug this into my network. We're gonna go over to uh, screen recording on the management interface on their website, and I'm gonna show you how you get logged in and get an AP set up and configured. All right, so we got that AP unboxed. I actually ended up setting up a couple more of them. Um, I made this video once on the management side of things, but I had some incorrect information, and so I wanted to just correct that make an entirely new one. So the APs are here, they're already set up. There's literally no process to setting them up other than plugging them in on your network and going to manage.alta.inc and clicking connect or add or whatever it says. Um, and then it literally does everything else by itself. The only thing you have to do is be on the same, um, the device you're using for the, the management, uh, your browser, you have to be on the same WAN IP address as your uh, network. So if you're using like a VPN or anything on like a phone or a computer um, and it has a different IP address than your actual connection, it will not show up. So you need to make sure you turn that off for the setup. Um, and probably, uh, I think once you're after it's set up and it's found, um, you should be able to turn that back on since it will be connected to your account. Um, but just one thing to note, make sure you turn any VPNs off uh, for your setup. Um, so we have here the network section, which is the actual devices themselves. And then we have the devices section here, which is all the devices connected to everything, um, connected to your Wi-Fi. Um, so we'll start here at the beginning. The dashboard just gives you an overview of everything, um, second by second, speed, traffic, um, up and down right here. And then you can sort it by an hour, two days, which it's only been up for a couple hours now. So there's not much there in terms of history shows your top active devices, your top active applications, and your top active network devices. Um, it looks like it shows five. I only have three access points, so of course it's gonna show them all, but they do move around in order of the most active. Um, and then you can also show um, your top active devices over here, and up here as well, um, how many connected devices there are. So pretty cool. Um, so that's the dashboard, and then it tells you how many uh, network devices you have, so access points. Um, 54 connected devices and then 124 applications which I mean doesn't really tell you much because you just see them down here um, like I said the network here is where you manage all your access points um, so if you want to edit anything you can click on the name to name them and then you can actually click on each access point and you can actually move this window around um, so we have here the channel the bandwidth uh, for 2 gig 2 gigahertz 5 gigahertz um, I'd run mine on the higher megahertz because I have enough APs to um, keep pretty good coverage. So um, there are enough APs to run the higher megahertz and still not have um, weak signals. Down here on advanced is where you choose your power. I have mine on medium. Um, I noticed when once I added this downstairs office one when they were on auto, um, nothing was really roaming to the downstairs office one and it was still trying to connect to the farther away um, upstairs access point. So I did go ahead and change everything to medium and some devices started connecting. Um, so I'm gonna leave it on medium for a little bit. I do have one more access point to add. Um, I'm gonna leave it on medium for now and see how that does um, with signal strength. But so far it's pretty good. I'll show you on the devices here in a minute where you can see the signal strength of everything. Um, IP address, I do have the um, IP address set statically just to where my, my Unify APs used to be. Um, and then you can do channel scans right here for each AP. And nice thing about it is it does not interrupt your network. Um, so that is pretty cool. Um, you also have your per AP settings here um, and settings like your LED color if you want to set it um, to a different color than your um, site settings. And here is where you choose your DHCP or static address um, and put that information in right there. So pretty easy to do. Um, devices, like I said, is going to be your connected Wi-Fi devices. Um, only thing I've noticed about this is a lot of devices um, show up with no name. Um, even though it knows a manufacturer, like Echoes and stuff like that, TVs, um, a lot of devices are still showing no name. Um, so I don't know if that's something they'll update the longer this is online, or if this is something that needs to be updated on the controller, you know, management side of thing, um, on Alta's end, but that's something um, I'll bring up to them and see um, later on after I give it a few days just to see what it does. 
you can sort stuff here by signal, VLAN, type. Um, I think type just does, oh, the network, yeah, so. I don't know why that is on the standard network. I don't think I have a standard network set up, but okay, I'll check that out in a little bit. Um, I'll go over all that in a second when we get to that section. Um, and then here are your settings right here. Of course, you can see your Wi-Fi strength. So everything's doing pretty good. Um, anything that was in the red after I changed the power to medium, I did go ahead and click reconnect over here, and it did um, indeed go to the closer access point. So it seems to be working a little bit better. All right, so here we have um, the Wi-Fi networks. So you can add SSIDs right here. Um, and then these are the ones that are already added. So this is my main one. Um, you can see the colors down here and the colors are what determine what access point broadcast that network. So if you create an SSID and you put it on the purple network or the purple color, then you have to make sure the AP you want to broadcast that also has the purple color assigned to it. Um, so if you click right here, you can see this one has black and gray. Gray is the IoT and the guest network. So that broadcasts from the main upstairs access point. And then this one just uh, uh, broadcast the uh, main network. So black is going to be default to all. You can't remove that. So that's going to be your main network. And then you can add secondary SSIDs and go from there with different colors. Um, you can also do, if you're not using WPA3, which I am, you can add more passwords. Um, and the passwords you can determine um, whether it's a guest network, internet only, IoT, large or standard or small network. Um, so if you wanted to have an IoT network with the same SSID, all you have to do is create a different password right there and log in with that password on your IoT devices and it will automatically be on the IoT network but using the same SSID. So rather than having to have you know two or three SSIDs for you know your main network, your guest network, your IoT network, maybe a camera network, stuff like that, you can do that all with different passwords under one name. Um, but you can create um, different SSIDs if you would, if you would like, which I have right here. Um, so I have an open one for the guest network. Instead of assigning a password to the guest network, I just have an open one. And then down here, it is set to guest. So that means it is restricted for, uh, to internet and IoT devices only. You can also do a hotspot and do a hotspot landing page um, and stuff like that. I couldn't get that to work, but I think that may be because I'm using the hotspot feature on the VLAN that this is running on on my UDM Pro. So I think it's doubling up and just messing it up. Um, so the guest network still just goes to my uh, default UDM Pro landing page and you can log in uh, using one of the, the created passwords on there. So all that works pretty well. Um, under system here, you just have your, your site settings. So like everything is set to blue um, by default. And then of course, like I said, you can change that on the uh, each individual AP if you choose. Your switch LED color, I don't have a switch right now. Um, like I said, they will be sending me one, so there's that. Um, and then just some advanced stuff down here uh, for like backup network and stuff like that. So it'll default to um, this address right here and assign its own DHCP if it can't get to the DHCP server and stuff like that. Um, a lot of stuff just to keep the network um, from going down completely. Um, there's a lot of features like on the AP itself um, over here under settings. Uh, fall back upon failure. If enabled, it'll fall back to VLAN 1 and DHCP. Um, if this configured connection fails, so like if you have a custom VLAN right here and a uh, custom DHCP here, you know, you got it set to static, it will fail back to basically default settings so you can connect to the device again rather than having to go to the site or go to the access point and physically reset it. Um, so very nice if you're doing like remote management um, because you can do multiple sites. Right here, you can add another site. Um, so you can have multiple sites that you're managing in one um, login, which is very nice. You can also add um, SSIDs to multiple sites. And this isn't something I really have any experience with because I only have this one, one site, of course. But if you want to um, you know, have this same SSID across multiple sites, you can do that. And then you know, say you're a business and you have a second location your SSID and password will transfer over. So if somebody connects to Wi-Fi on one, they can go to another and still connect to the Wi-Fi using the same credentials and all that information remains the same. And it's all managed through this one interface. So pretty nice. Um, like I said um, in my unboxing video, they do intend to bring this to a local controller as well. Um, so this is free, completely free. There's no uh, mention of them charging for it, um, but they do say it is in the pipeline to bring the ability to host your own local controller. Um, and they do say they have something coming like a gateway or router uh, similar to like a UDM Pro uh, type of product. 
um, some sometime in 2024 is what they have told me so far. Um, of course, probably subject subject to change because it's still in development, and I don't know how far along any of that is. Um, but that's the interface and that's the setup. I'm very very happy with these access points. Um, they are of course all Wi-Fi six. I only had one uh, UI one uh, Wi-Fi six access point. Um, so now that everything is on, you know, these pro Wi-Fi six access points, my connection has definitely improved. Um, I did a couple of speed tests around and places I was getting to 300, I'm getting five to 600, even maybe pushing seven to 800, depending on network activity. Um, and hopefully that'll improve a little bit. I am sharing a um, one gig connection from the switch all these are connected to down to my UDM Pro. Um, when I get my 10 gig switch, it'll be 10 gig SFP from my switch to my UDM Pro. Um, so while each access point and port on the switch are still gonna be gigabit, um, the bandwidth between everything shared is going to be the maximum of my um, internet bandwidth, which is two gigabits. So that'll be pretty nice. And we'll try all that out and I'll do a full network setup tour and video once that switch comes in and I have everything entirely set up. Um, this is just the unboxing and rundown of the controller. And of course I will do more controller videos and stuff like that as things get updated, new features come out and stuff like that. And any new products I will um, also demo and uh, let you guys know about. I'm going to link these down in the description below where you can pick them up on Amazon. And I am Colin with Tech Out. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Have a great day.